Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. Thanks for joining me for a live stream. I really hope that you can hear this. Um, let me know if, if you're out there, if you can hear the audio just fine. I'm actually using OBS again, and there is a there is an update that I found. So hopefully everything should be running smoothly. I, may, um, I used Wirecast last time, and it was a total failure. It was kind of funny. But anyway, I'm going to play a little bit of this library. I'm reviewing Spitfire's solo strings tonight. So this is Violin Virtuoso. It's a pretty cool library so far. Now, I haven't had much time with this library. Um, I've had, I, I kind of wanted to get it a, get a fresh reaction to it. Although I did play it last time I tried reviewing this live. Um, so these reactions are still a little fresh, but I still remember how I felt last time. And uh, this is my second time really listening to this. So what is this library? This is Spitfire's solo string, which means that they're a recording of a single string instrument. Violin, viola, cello, and bass. As a matter of fact, there are three different violins. First one is Violin Virtuoso, which is like a solo player. The, uh, the techniques have a very stylized sound to them. They're very expressive. Um, the violin virtuoso is supposed to be the person, the violinist standing in front of the orchestra, the person being featured in the performance. So they have to stand out. Violin first desk is the first chair violinist. Um, their sound is going to be a little bit louder than everybody else's. And then we have violin progressive, which according to Spitfire, this is... They were uh, recording a little bit further away from the conductor and it's designed to fit into larger string sections or offer up solo passages in a more contemporary vernacular. So there are a couple of extra articulations with this one. It's called Mandolin Pizzicato and Tremolo Whispers, which I'll get to. Um, I'm not going to cover all the sounds, but I just want to go over the, the interface just to show you a little bit how it works. So in the menus, we have Extended techniques, individual articulations, legato patches, and other patches. And then you can choose according to the instrument. So let's listen to Violin Virtuoso. I want to load that one. All right, as you can see, this this is pretty simple. Um, right here at the bottom, you see all your articulations, and right now it's set to long, so let me play that. Now, long is, is uh, another term for is, is sustain. Um, it's just a note that's held out, and this one has vibrato by default, but you can take out the vibrato. Right now it's set to CC21. So you can control the level of, of vibrato with your MIDI channel. Sorry, not MIDI channel, your uh, control.
And this can be programmed in your DAW. As well as dynamics, release, tightness, and expression. Those are all MIDI assignable. So even though they're, they're assigned to a certain number by default, you can change that to anything you'd like. All right, and all these articulations down here are key switchable. And you can see on this key bed, they're in red. And I can trigger them if I go low enough on my keyboard. However, it's probably best to do it in your MIDI editor. So let me go back up. Here is Consordino, which means with the mute, and this is to give the violin a thinner and quieter sound. So when you say CS, that means Consordino. Whoops, we had a note that was hanging right there. All right, flotando is a, it's a very soft sound. Now, an interesting thing about this library is that it was recorded at the Air Studios. I think that's the name, give me one second. The hall at Air Studios, and it was captured on rich sounding two inch tape. Now, I'm not really big about whether it's on tape. There's some people that just absolutely love the sound of tape, kind of uh, tapers off those high end, so you don't get that harshness, but it's still high quality. Um, tape usually has a little bit of a hiss to it, although I can't really detect it on this library. But usually that that translates to a, a sound that gels together pretty well. Um, I have yet to hear how these sound all together in an ensemble. Either way, this sound is absolutely gorgeous. It's very gentle. Here are harmonics. Now you can see and on the on the key bed, depending on the articulation that you choose, the range will increase or decrease. So right now harmonics so it harmonics um, can only be played on certain parts of the violin. That's probably not true what I just said right now. What I meant to say is that harmonics can only be played on certain part of the keys keybed because of their higher range. I think that's a more um, acceptable comment. All right, here we have a long progressive vibrato. Now, although you can do what I'm doing right now, these I don't think these are intended to be played as chords because they're solo strings. Um, violins can play multiple notes at the same time, like double or triple stops. But remember that when you're playing chords, you're essentially multiplying the number of players. So I would just do one note at a time. This is Sol Pont, which is right next to the bridge or below the bridge. You're going to get a really harsh sound with lots of overtones. These are not commonly used, but um, I'm glad that they're available in this. Now, staccato is one of those, those articulations that you should have it, at least in your basic libraries. And this one certainly sounds great. And by the way, all the short notes are going to be velocity sensitive. The long notes are going to be controlled, the dynamics are going to be controlled by the mod wheel on the long notes, but on the short notes it's going to be velocity sensitive. So if I hit it softly, it's going to play back softly. have spiccato which is an even shorter type of note I think it's 
I think it's caused by uh, sort of bouncing the bow across the string. That sounds very cool. And we have pizzicato, which is plucking the string with your finger. And then another technique is called Bartok pizzicato, where you, I th believe you snap it with your finger. And this has a little arrow indicating that it's connected to this one, uh, to the other pizzicato, but it's, it's uh, layered by velocity. So the hard velocities are gonna be the Bartok. Then we have the colenio, which is hitting the strings with the back of the stick, with the back of the bow, excuse me. Very nice sound. Um, short harmonics. And we have Baroque. Consordino, so uh, with the mute, but a Baroque style, which tends to be um, tends to be soft, but I think it's just these very slow movements across the strings. Beautiful, and then we have tremolo. Then we have a major second trill. And then a minor second. So whole step and half step. This is also controlled. You can also control the dynamic of that. And what I appreciate about Spitfire's libraries is that the transition to the transition between dynamics is very smooth. Um, I own libraries that um, are a little older but you can hear those transitions and it almost sounds like you have two instruments playing at the same time because you um, the the blend between the dynamics is is almost not there it sort of tapers into the next one is what I'm trying to say all right here we have an easy mix which allows you to blend the close mic and far mic so the far is going to give you more of the room sound, more room response, if you will. And then close mic is going to give you more of the instrument sound with a, a drier quality to it, although not completely dry. So as I adjust this, I'm going to get more samples loaded or different samples loaded. So let's listen to the close mic. And you can see the audience is getting closer to the orchestra. So this is a lot, um, a lot clearer, a lot more detailed. And then I'm going to drag it all the way to the far setting. You're going to hear more of the room. That's such a beautiful sound. All right, so here in the middle we have our settings. So you have one of the features of these this library is that um, it has a CTA stereo mix. CTA being the type of miking uh, used to record it. So C would be, I believe, I, I knew it before. It's either a conductor or center, something like that. And then here we have the tree, which is, sits high above the conductor. And then I think A stands for ambience. Now, I could be completely wrong about all of this. I'm going based off of um, maybe a bad memory. And anyway, 
I can engage these different settings and it's going to load even more samples. So be aware of that, that this is going to use more RAM. However, it's going to give you a more interesting stereo field or sound field. So I'm going to start increasing the volume of these. Let me mute the, the C and the A. And then let's just hear the ambient. Very cool. And there's just the close one right there. I'm going to keep it at the tree. Now, one of the cool features about having it in contact, uh, although this, this library has it built in, I think, is that you can purge the samples. So if you're running low on RAM, and you've already recorded your part, all you have to do is purge the samples and it gets rid of everything that was not used. So you can go from 460 megabytes down to, let's say something like 30 or 40 megabytes. So you can dramatically reduce the, um, the amount of RAM that you're using. Then you can tr transpose it, CC mapped velocity. Um, so, Okay, so instead of controlling velocity from from your your plane, I guess you can set it to a fader or knob, sync to tempo. That's going to be syncing to your DAW. Then it has round robin function. For those of you who are new to sample libraries or um, music production, uh, when you record, when you play a sample over and over, the same sample, you end up getting something called a machine gun effect. In order to um, prevent this, what a lot of companies do is they record the same note many times. So you have s subtle variations of it. Sometimes uh, what they do is that they borrow the sample from the next note and just resample it. So they down t tune it down or tune it up. That way you can get uh, another variation of that sound. So this makes it sound more natural. All right, I'm going to... We have dynamic vibrato release, tightness, and expression again, which you can automate. All right, then over here we have the ostinatum mode. Ostinatum allows you to take certain articulations like or techniques like staccato or spiccato and create an ostinato out of them. So the, the, it's, a, it's a group of notes played back and forth like... Uh, But this is like something you hear in a lot of movies. Or even chords. So the way we do that is we go to this staff right here. And it's probably hard to see because this is a small screen and I can't really make this bigger. But you can choose your pattern. So if I wanted to start with a whole note or half note, I just click right here. So I'm going to choose two quarter notes. It's not doing anything because I have to turn it on. So I'm going to press order pressed. When I turn on chord mode, it's going to let me play both of them. I'm going to add two eighth notes in there. Maybe one more quarter note and then an eighth note.
Now, as somebody who likes playing keyboard, I probably would not use this mode. Uh, I would probably play all the ostinatum, ostinatos, ostinati. I don't know how to say the plural version of that. Maybe it's ostinat ostinatum. But anyway, that's a cool function. It's like an arpeggiator for your string sample library. All right, now let's listen to the other libraries and talk about the other features. Now that I've got given you an overview of of the setup. So over here in the library menu, we have different instruments. I think I explained violin, virtuoso, first desk, progressive. So these are going to have the same setup where you have uh, you have all your articulation or techniques down below. And let me let me hear this. So this is a viola. I believe, oh, you can also, in the settings menu, you can turn off these different techniques to save on RAM, just in case you're not going to use a Baroque Consordino or Brush Consordino. That's a good feature right there. It saves on space and uh, it's easier on your computer. Let's listen to the cello. So I have these on an SSD, uh, and they're still kind of taking some time to load. Very nice sound, and then let's hear the bass. What I like about Spitfire's libraries is that they seem production ready. They always sound production ready. You get that that room sound. Um, you get the you get this stereo feel, this orientation. You, ca you can kind of tell where it is in the orchestra. Like the violin ones, you usually hear them a little bit to the left. Uh, you can almost see them in your mind's eye. Whereas the bass would be more in the center. Well, depending on the type of music you're doing too. Usually cellos are laid out to, to the to the right side, violas so, somewhere in the middle. All right, let's list or let's check out the other features. So they have extended techniques as well. What are extended techniques? So we have core techniques such as uh, in the violin virtuoso. I'm guessing core techniques are going to be the standard stuff like sustain, legato, maybe uh, consordino. Okay, yeah, these are the these are the common ones. And then decorative techniques. What are these? Tremolo. That's strange. I would consider tremolo to be a core technique. This is something that you find a lot often in in uh, string music. So they have that for all of the instruments, core and decorative techniques. All right, let's go to individual articulation. So if you want to save even more space, or if you like having, having everything separated out track by track, I'm talking about violin, legato, violin, pizzicato, etc. 
uh, you can do that. You can have access to every single articulation that this has. So this is the virtu the violin virtuoso. We have consordino, flautando, harmonics, progressive vibrato, sopon uh, Lots of good stuff here. Short noise staccatissimo. Let's listen to that. Sure, you cannot do that on a real violin. Still sounds cool, right? Okay. Let's listen to that um, tremolo harm. Tre sorry, tremolo whispers. This is found in the progressive violin. So I recommend you have headphones or studio monitors on right now. Hopefully, you can hear this if you're listening to on your if you're listening on your phone. That is beautiful. Then we have, let's see, something I haven't seen. Short mandolin pizzicato. I don't know how this is done. That's a really nice sound, by the way. Short Paganini. I forgot what this was, but I guess we'll hear it. I could be wrong, but I, if I remember correctly, a short Paganini. This is a uh, type of pizzicato where you pluck with your left hand. I think. I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm giving myself an out. All right, let's try to find an articulation we have, or I haven't heard. So let's see. Short spiccato consordino. Short super sultasto. Sultasto is near the bridge or over the bridge, so you're going to get a mellower, um, I would say more open tone to it. That is very soft. So you have many techniques in this library. By the way, this is meant to accompany uh, a string orchestra section or a library. So if you need a solo break, or even if you're you're ha you're using a string quartet sound in your recording, this is a great library. Okay, let's uh, let's look at other stuff. Legato patches. This is something that I was looking for. So I opened up this review with a little demo of the total performance, which layers different type of articulations or techniques. So you have portamento on the very soft notes. And on your normal notes, your normal playing range, you have legato. Portamento is when you slide to a note while you're bowing in one direction. So you have that this little glide. Let me play this for you once it loads. So legato um, is whenever, whenever you bow in one direction and you play different notes. You're gonna have you're gonna hear them connected smoothly. Now when I play very softly on my right hand, I'm going to hear uh, that portamento. That's a gorgeous sound. It sounds very weepy and emotional.
when I control the vibrato and I bring it all the way down, I get tremolo. So that's a great feature right there for having it, having it, almost everything you need for a performance or a uh, cadenza right there available. All right, let's listen to I want to listen to the cello. Maybe total performance. Now, cello is a very difficult instrument to get just right. Um a lot of times you can hear the how uh, you can you can notice that it's sampled because of the transitions the legato. So I imagine this is going to be a, a large one. Not getting that portamento for some reason. I'm not sure why portamento is not in there, but I would have loved to to have heard that in here, just like we heard with the virtuoso. Then we have other patches. So we have economic, um, light resources, and time machine. So let's say we'll see what economic is. All right, so this is 158 megabytes. So that's not huge. I think it's just starting you out with, uh, with fewer techniques. So it's not taking up as much space. But I'm not sure if these techniques have fewer samples in them. So this one says switch to long one times round robin. That just may be the same sample. I don't know. So, uh, this is two times round robin. So to my ear, uh, it sounds like there's two different samples playing or alternating. On this one, it's uh, two times round robin. And a pizzicato as well. All right, let's listen to light resources. So this spiccato right here has eight round robins. I don't know what it means by light resources. Let's see. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that the on the spiccato and staccato, you can actually change the tightness or adjust the tightness of it. So here's kind of loose, here's really tight. It's a great feature. I guess I'd, I should have read up on what light resources are. And then we have 
Time Machine. Now, Time Machine allows you to stretch the sample without degrading the, the sound or, um, for example, I'm going to stretch this out. Well, that one, I can hear it being stretched. So you're basically stretching the, the sample out or compressing it and it's retaining its uh, its pitch and its timbre but on some of them I can hear the uh, the separation of the sound and it didn't sound that great. So anyway, um, I forgot to mention the, the installation on this was pretty easy. I used Spitfire Audio's download manager. Um, this was, I believe, let me check the, the size of it. The download size was 43.3 gigabytes. So it, it took a pretty long time to download, but you can buy this on a disc. They recommend that you use an SSD because it's going to be a lot faster. Um, but the sample, the uncompressed size is 66.2 gigabytes. This is available and it works on Mac and PC. And it doesn't require the full contact player, um, but it, it comes with a free contact player and it's a version 5 or higher, 5.6 or higher. Um, let's see what else. This works with, this is uh, NKS compatible, meaning if you have a native instruments keyboard or the machine pad, um, this is going to automatically configure to it using the control software. And that means that you're going to see all the key switches colored up um, it's going to be automatically mapped to your, your keyboard or your machine. And I believe that's it. So friends, if you like this review, um, please give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel for more videos. And let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me review or give me a video idea. I don't promise that I'll get to everything because uh, I'm a pretty busy guy, but I will, I will try. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.